So in honor of Aretha Franklin, the Queen of Soul, is that, what, is that, is that correct? Queen of Soul. Sure, the Queen. Is that the, the title? Queen. Died on the same day as the King of Rock and Roll. Really? Yeah, it's terrible. That's a bummer. Wow. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. That's my dad gave me that stat. <laughs> That's a dad stat. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Someone on the news probably had it too. I just don't watch the news. Yeah. We're going to uh, do this little segment here for old Aretha. We're going to put some respect on some people's names that we've uh, liked through the preseason here. Oh, a little... A little uh, well, out of respect for Aretha. What was uh, that? Oh, what? for sure. Find out what it means to me. We're going to let her drive the first 10, 15 of the show here. Which probably turn into more, but you know. Yeah, you know how it goes. Welcome in to She's the, to the game. She's totally worth totally it. Totally. Oh, totes. Sure. Totes my goats. Besides Natural Woman, what's your favorite song by Aretha? I mean, how do you not like R-E-S-P-E-C-T? Yeah. It's, it's, it's too mainstreamy. Well, well, when you were trying to get that sound clip together, I couldn't help but dance. Yeah. No, it's a great song. I, I really like Natural Woman, not because it makes me feel like a natural woman, <laughs> but because she makes me feel like I make her feel like a natural woman, and that's a great feeling. That's, a, that's what she intended to right. Right, to get across. Oh, I make her feel yeah. you so like, good. You like the pink Cadillac, too. Oh, yeah. Who doesn't want to ride around in a pink Cadillac? <laughs> I <mean>. Love. <laughs> High freeway. Come on. <laughs> All right. First guy on, on my... Who needs some respect? On my big board of respect from preseason love and... In no particular order. Other things. In no pre- in no particular order, but this guy is leading the preseason in rushing. Because the right? next two guys are fun, but this guy's great. I gave him a shout out last week saying definitely I got to keep your eye on. He came out. Obviously, if you watch this Rams-Oakland game, you wanted to punch yourself in the face because all they kept saying was, well, it's just going to be a vanilla game plan here. These guys are <laughs> competing. Who can show each other less? Yeah, it was terrible. It's like, it was all right. A, it really was a horrible game. It was it was the easiest game to turn off, that's for sure. Oh, absolutely. Those home announcers no for the you know, like the local channel of all these different teams, it's oh. really hit and miss. Yeah, Those Patriots is. ones oh, that just like mutton yes, like them boys just <laughs> bop, bopping themselves on the head. Mutt yeah. like making fun of the one dude's pants. Oh, Ninkovich was on the sideline with some tight pants. He's, he's like, like, You have to lay down to <laughs> to <laughs> sip those things up. Oh, Phone man. down. No big he deal. He said, No, it's a clip on. <laughs> Did you Mutt. paint those guys yeah. on? Uh, so Chris Warren, let's put some respect on Chris Warren looking like a beast out there, taking many second efforts to bring this guy down, looking strong, quite strong out there in his in his uh, rookie debut. Gashing defenses for four, five, nine, 13 yards at a time. Definitely somebody um, starring up for the for the preseason here. If you have some room on a on a taxi squad and some waiver action. Absolutely. Go ahead and scoop that guy up. Putting the other running backs uh, not named Marshawn Lynch on notice. Yeah, Marshawn's a little old, so this isn't necessarily an immediate play, and we don't know what you're going to get out of Doug Martin. The other two guys there are kind of the, more of the satellite role. This guy looks like he fits right into a John Gruden-like offense who is on paper going to be there for 10 years, so you got to like... On paper. Yeah, pay. You know, what you see from there. So let's put some respect on, on, on Chris Warren out of Texas's name here. I like it. Who's the, who's who's the next? Oh, you, oh, little little yep. little homage. Here you go, here you go, Chris Warren. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. That's what you get. That's what <laughs> that's what I wanted. Uh, give I it like to it. me. All right, who's next? Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. It's sock it to me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> shock it to me. Shock it to me. Shock it to me. Well, next next we're gonna hit you with a little Carlos and Duke, a duet, a duet for, for number two on the respect meter here. And again, in no particular order, but. In the after show on the uh, premium Patreon stuff that we were doing the last exclusive week. Exclusive Patreon only after show. For the first time, we alluded to that, you know, we all like Chubb and he had a bad first game or whatever. And there's no reason to get discouraged about it. But said, you know, there's probably Duke and a, Carlos right, are really good players. There's probably a decent chance that Duke and Carlos will grab this thing by the horns and not let it go. And, you know, you might be in running back purgatory with... Uh, Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb, which for, we said for a immediately season. after the draft. Right. Right. And they didn't know but, they were going to get Nick Chubb. But in it's the draft. been kind of, you know, people have been saying all sorts of things and all been all over the place. And it's seen Duke Johnson, ADP wise, completely disrespected. Oh, and, yeah. And Carlos Hyde went on the show. Um, last last week, we basically, you know, Carlos is a, is a top 10, 12 running back in the league. Yeah. It just he hasn't been healthy throughout his career. You saw what he is capable of last year in San Francisco. You can point to some drops if you want to. 
Uh, but he but absolutely, you can point to a bunch of catches if right. you like. You can point to he absolutely crushed it last year, and he came out in this first drive of a preseason game. I understand all this, but him and Duke were just thunder and lightning all the way down the field. Would you just say one two punched it all the way down the field. Literally all the way down the field. There was nothing you could do to stop it. Like Carlos was just running over you, trucking. Getting has has shown you some speed, stiff arms, mean stiff arms, and then like you said, the burst to the edge. He was getting the edge and then accelerating down the dang sideline. This is huge for Carlos owners because you took a a big bump when he leaves San Francisco because you were hoping he'd stay, obviously, just to be in there with with uh, Shanahan, and then you took another lump in the face when they get Chubb in the draft right. because he gets you know okay well all right he's on the Browns he's gonna be he's gonna he's gonna gobble it up Duke's out there but they don't have a lot of good pass catchers and crows you know, out and yeah exactly so then they get then they bring in Chubb in the draft and you need to get another bop in the face for right. Carlos owners you thought you the first right. day first day first you day dodged you dodged the bullets. yeah you dodged the Saquon bullets didn't last long didn't say top the of the one first, one and the, the one four bullet. top of the second round exactly top of the second round here they go with Chubb, and then you see Carlos do this, and just like just looking everything, just what Jay said, looking ridiculously good on the first and second level. And, you just did, and, it, guys and it wasn't a Shanahan offense. Right. That's what I like. But to it's see. a Todd Haley offense. It does it with exactly. a good offensive line, a good offensive line, a run threat quarterback who's very underrated, and we've been yelling that at you for years. Here comes Carlos Hyde, and you and you really can't even stop him. And now they just get you know whether or not what receivers are out there actually when the games when the games really count. We're not really sure, but they get Josh Gordon back. You got to respect Jarvis Landry and Joe a stud. And what do you do with Carlos? And you know out of the backfield, and here you go. It's just great for Carlos owners to see this. A very nice little shot in the arm for confidence in your Carlos stock. And of course, obviously Chubb's a. Chubb's dangerous for you right. down the line, but you know going into week one, Carlos is playing some solid, going to be playing solid football, and you're going to get a, a good stretch. Don't know how long it's going to last. Obviously, injuries could happen. It could happen to Chubb. Carlos could and stay Carlos all year. And Carlos necessarily hasn't been the most healthy guy, so it's not the end of the world for, for uh, Chubb owners and those kind of people, and Chubb's going to be just fine. You saw what Chubb could do in this game when he was running with the one some. Chubb's going to be just fine, but I, Carlos is going to grab a hold of this, and then Duke Johnson on top of that is just – a completely change of a different back coming in there. And when he was getting his runs, he was ripping off runs. I, right. He didn't even have a catch, right. but he was ripping off runs. Absolutely. So just those two guys and put before, some respect before on we get off, yeah. Look, all right, Carl, before, before we get off of them, before we leave them, segue. because we're here. All right, gotcha. But, but before we take off, because we are in the Chubb area, the Chubb owners, like Casey said, week one, it didn't look great. Chubb Don't needs get, a little respect back on his Chubb name after week one. Respect. He's out there running good. And All yes, three of them were, were loaded up. Yep. It's preseason, and you, it really doesn't matter because it's preseason. But don't get down and just don't sell low on Chubb. Don't get oh, low. Yeah, there's no but reason I'm saying, to do that. But I'm saying, but like for the last couple of months, we've been talking up Chubb on here. We've been talking up tons of different guys, but, you know, and talking down some and this and that. But like if you got Chubb, don't see Carlos and say, oh, well, I really need to sell on Chubb while I can. And don't see Chubb looking bad in week one of the preseason and be like, oh, well, I got to get out from under this. I just put in a 1 4, 1 5, 1 3 rookie pick on him. Just ride it out. It'll play. It'll right. play out yeah, for I mean, you. There's, there's absolutely no reason to get discouraged. There's a one year out on this contract for Carlos Hyde. Like, he could potentially come in here and crush, and he's probably going to come in here and do some really good work. We just saw what it could be. And then it's probably going to be Nick Chubb's backfield from here on out. So there is, ap- and I and I think Nick Chubb is very talented. I said on the after show last year, I'm not last week. I'm not shaking up my rankings just because of some stupid preseason stuff exactly. going on here. Right. I still believe Chubb is the one three for me, um, just out of talent and where he could be. So I, and I'm I'm sticking with my guy. I, there's no reason to be low or it's, it's a preseason. Like Carlos is here, they paid him, let him do his thing. And like and I that, said, that's Chubb at one three with with. Geis at one two, right? right? Right. We talked about that on the after so, show last week. So, so saying like, base getting back like Carlos, the, the thing Carlos is a top 10, 12 back in the league. Like, there's no reason to be upset if if Chubb's not the guy that's out there because he like Carlos is an awesome running back. Well, we spent the last six months of the preseason telling you to how to navigate. Regardless if you think he is or not, he is. Well, we spent well we spent the, we spent the months and months to telling you how to na- navigate the rookie running backs in the in the startup and, and in your rookie draft. And if you have a really late rookie draft now, it's almost the opposite. Instead of trading back and not needing to take somebody and picking up equity, get Carry On Johnson. 
Now you got some people are taking Royce Freeman at one two and everything that's right. going on. If, if we talked about this on this, on the Patreon stuff last week, like now you could trade back and end up with Ch- Nick with, Chubb or a Darius Geis or something like if, that. If so, you could so afford to take Geis at, at one five one six, some interesting, interesting, it's crazy. So the whole Browns backfield and the Browns in general, you get a little bit of. <laughs> you know what? Uh, you know what other uh, Aretha Franklin song I really, I really enjoy is, What's that? is "Think." Oh, if you're not familiar, you need to go check that go out. Check it's that one it's up. the biggest advocate for not drinking and driving. I didn't know they would just put that into a song. Awesome. She Good really crushed it. Mothers Against Drunk Driving. She really crushed it. I'm gonna stay at Casey's tonight. <laughs> All right. Next on the list of putting some respect on that name. Let's go with a little James Conner. Oh, James Conner. The Conner show. He looked gashing him. Unstoppable. That may be gashing them boys. Gashing them. <laughs> work, work, work in them hoes. Yeah. Just doing <laughs> absolute work out there, looking good. Um, I thought that was a very solid game from him in, on la- two weeks ago, and then he put out a really great game in this past week uh, against the Packers. Cutting them up. Yeah, the Packers' defense, you know, didn't look good. All the running backs kind of did work for the Steelers there. Sure. To, uh, Toussaint. Toussaint. Toussaint got in there and did some work, and Jalen Samuels had a good game. So, But, like, nobody could, could tackle James Conner. I mean, they were trying to come correct and just be getting flown, flung off, and he just looked unstoppable. He didn't get – I think he had five runs. He didn't get a ton of work. He was out of there, and they let the rest – the other two take over. But it was just – it was awesome to see, and I mean, if I was living on Bell, I would have reported to practice the next day. Right, right. <laughs> like, that's how good James Conner. This looked. is this is just to remind you, James Conner is a guy in college who was one of the top leading rushers at Pitt in 2014 before he had a, a terrible injury. Um, was averaging six yards a carry and had 26 touchdowns. 26 of them. That's not an accident. No. Like this dude is a horse. He's a hoss, and. At one point, they were saying, you know, he's not the greatest uh, pass catcher. He got, uh, he had the injury, and then he had all that cancer stuff happen to him, which was also terrible. He came back his senior year and and caught twenty one balls, which was by far the most he had ever caught in his he career. He spent all offseason in the wide receiver room, right? And how to? Well, this is what we gave you last year in the rookie mock it up before you fuck it up stuff, and it was it was James Conner, and just like Casey said, it was. You're you're looking at his most recent college season coming out. It was dude was coming back from cancer and a knee injury. But you go back to still average five point one a still, carry. Still did thousand yards. Still did twenty one receptions and four more touchdowns. Still on those did good. Catches. That's really good. Those are really good numbers. Yeah. But the numbers the year before that, two years before two, that, well, yeah. But with the sophomore. Injury, the 2014 stuff that Casey's right. talking about was ridiculous, and the names that he was in, he was up there with the Melvin Gordons, yeah, and those ty- and it was Jay Ajayi, Melvin Gordon, and some other college football running back studs, and James Conner's name was all up in those guys, those top five guys, his production, yeah, and then he gets two harp, you know, an, an, an injury, and then cancer for a young man. Two things that you don't want to have. Obviously, you expect injuries in football, but you definitely don't expect a 19-year-old man to get cancer. Battles it, comes back. We gave you all this stuff as a rookie coming in. Was absolutely looking ridiculous and, in that season that he tore and you his have, leg early on. Right, and then you have some people talking about how bad he looked last year. He didn't really look that bad, and now you've had a year to get in here and be a pro pro football right. player, have pro trainers, have get farther away from your cancer battle. Right, and far, It was the MCL tear? As well, that yeah. he had that one, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I you think got, he ended up with a knee injury last year at some did, point yep. too. This, this to me, this is this is one of the best stories in football, man. Yeah, this, and it, it's a it's a fantastic story, and and just not to get caught up in the story, like he doesn't even guy, want you to care about the story. Awesome. Right. The guy That's is a what fantastic I'm running back, it's and not, you can listen, I like Jalen Samuels. I think he's very interesting. He's super intriguing. Um, he can obviously do a little bit of everything. He looks good in the backfield. He looks good catching the ball. Some things have him as a tight end. Like you don't really know how Jalen Samuels, and he's very interesting. But to me, it's a no-brainer which guy's the handcuff to Le'Veon Bell here, and I, and I it's James Conner. I completely agree. Yeah, absolutely. So put some respect on his name. Here you go, James Conner. Boom! If you didn't already have it, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Jay Wayne take the next guy. All right. I know you want to put some respect on this. Yeah, somebody needs to put some respect on some Wayne Gallman. 
We took our first non five star review on iTunes last year in our rookie mock it up before you fuck it up, and all it said was Wayne Gallman question mark exclamation point because we took him at like two seven or eight in our rookie mock it up. I think I took him at two eight, and I was just taking stabs through the running backs, which paid off for me time and time and time again through my rookie running backs last year. And Jane and then Wayne Gallman, all he did was come out and look like the best running back the Giants had last year, absolutely and by far. And then now look at I mean what you got old washed up James Stewart. Or Jonathan Stewart trying to stay in his way. Man, Come on it, now. It's night and day when Isn't you it? watch J- Jonathan Stewart and Wayne Gallman out close. there running in the preseason right now. It doesn't. It's not even close. Wayne Gallman is so quick. Unless you're listening to Bobby Sylvester's commentary. Oh, and get off of here. You told you to forget about him. That's just re- that's just the dumbest thing I've ever heard because he looks so good out there. He's cutting it up. He's physical he's pass protecting and catching the ball any kind of dump down you want oh he's sucking he, every he, ball that comes up you can't take him off the field he doesn't have to come off the field on any down or distance and he's just he's just gaining yards no matter what you do he's catching all it's all of his targets and he's he's oh, averaging a good yard not per only carry is he here. catching them all he's just sucking those things up right like, and then he's up the field right. now he's a running back in space exactly and it's just it's awesome to watch i feel bad because he's going to be stuck behind saquon for double dipping another, on handcuffs here well right. this is why this is why i called that that one star two star review whatever it gave us weak because first of all it's dynasty and you never know how anything's going to play out we were the back end of a second round rookie draft and you never know how any of that goes it's all dart throws anyway yeah. and so that's why i called this week and another thing that i said when we were talking about james connor last year was you got the head coach of clemson who outside Wayne Gallman. you said connor my bad, my, Wayne Gallman. So you for and Clint, you got the head coach of Clemson, Dabo, Dabo Sweeney, who outside of Alabama is doing the best job recruiting in the country for years now, recruiting the best talent outside of Alabama in the country. Yeah, yeah. And go Tigers. So you got Dabo saying as in an interview when Wayne Gallman's gone, they're talking about how you going to replace Wayne Gallman. He goes, well, and this is what I was saying last year when I saw, saw that interview. He said in that running back room. He was the alpha dog. Nobody said anything without looking at Wayne Gallman first. And now we got a bunch of good, you know, ta- and this is this, this Wayne Gallman was not a freshman, sophomore. He had been there for a few years. So you had talent lined up behind him. And Wayne Gallman was the alpha dog and all of that talent. That he was couldn't even get on the field. He was the only nah. running back that did anything his last year at Clemson because he did everything for that team. And I'm right. a Gamecock, so I know I can respect what I saw and what we couldn't tackle. And it was Wayne Gallman. So hammering some handcuffs here, but we're just trying to put some respect on some guys' names. That aren't getting it. This is the guy to own. It's It sucks that now you're going to have, like, you got to wait for a couple of years now for Gallman to even be, unless you have Saquon, to be worth a shit because and it sucks that he's stuck behind this guy who they just drafted one yeah two, two. He's, you just got a taxi squad he him looks, and let him he hang looks out so good when he gets his opportunities he looked good last year as a rookie when he got his opportunities Absolutely. in most cases yeah and you i mean yeah because because saquon is a do-it-all back and that's why he got drafted where he is he will be doing it all yep and you know and gallman will come in there and spell from time to time and basically saquon's gonna get all that he can handle if anything happens to saquon this is the guy exactly for sure this yeah, is the it's not even close. that's why we want to tell you to put some respect on these guys guy's name just i know we're talking about handcuffs here for the last five minutes but you know some people want to question the pittsburgh handcuff some people want to question the giants handcuff and there is no we're giving you our uh respectful well if you got if you got opinion here's the thing if you got the bench spots if you got a bench spot if you got saquon and you got a bench spot i would have gallman on my team if you don't have saquon and you got a bench spot at the bottom i would be interested in looking into gallman versus somebody else because i'd always i always want that one injury guy that can come in and win me some weeks sure even if it's if one it, injury away you one, got enough, one injury you got enough spots guy, versus somebody that'll never make my lineup without you know like a seventh or eighth wide receiver that's not even close to getting in my lineup he'd have to have the whole team would have to get injured for him to get in my lineup i'd rather have a guy like gallman where if Saquon gets a high ankle sprain even. He's out four weeks. Galvin can plug right into your lineup, plug and play, no worries about it. And the thing is, if Saquon gets hurt, and it's safe he gets hurt in the fourth quarter of a game and you don't really get to see Gallman, maybe you're competitive in the waiver wire. Uh-huh. But if Saquon goes down in the first quarter of a game and Gallman comes out there and tears it up, now you got to really pay up. That's all I'm saying. It's just having – if you got a roster – if it's a short bench league, yeah, you might not have space for Gallman. But if you have the roster spot for him and he's hanging out there being disrespected – that man Do respect it. that man respect him all right put let's, some respect on let's, his let's keep it with another ex clemson guy oh chad kelly might not have known that he went to clemson let's put some respect on this guy's name here for a minute i mean 
came was, out slinging. Was that was that Clemson had to go to the last chance you there? <laughs> I, I don't remember exactly which 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 place that was, but Some it was Florida it was the year school, before they they first they first did that uh, last chance you he he was the quarterback over there had to basically go back to JUCO because he was I think he got in a fight or punched somebody or did something. He's got some off the field, but. Basically, He's it's, it's been it's been the head it's been <laughs> the head keeping this guy out of stardom and, right. and having a chance to do things. And I don't necessarily love him and and his attitude and his perception. But what you're seeing on the field right now, from year one to year two, and what he's been putting on tape throughout the preseason here, has been fantastic. He's decisive when he throws the ball. He's got a cannon. He looks good. He looks loose out there. Um, He's a footballer. There's no doubt about it. I know there's been, I'm not going to take any credit for Chad. There's plenty of people who out there have been saying that Chad Kelly should be on all your dynasty benches as your, or that's definitely super flex, you know, benches uh, for a long time. But, you know, just to see this kid start to put it together here, took uh, Paxton Lynch off the field, who, which I, 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 any three of us in this room might be able to take him off the field at this point. I could. Guys, it's a train wreck. (laughs) He's um, six seven. That's it. I got four good throws. Taking in nothing away from Chad Kelly and how good he's looked, I think there is some definite respect that needs to be put on his name. And if if Case Keenum keeps being a little on again, off again, he might need to watch his back. I hear you. Yeah. I think Case will be fine, but I think Case. Will be I really fine could too. take passing Lynch. I could take his job. I got. I was throwing the football on the sidelines at the flag football game last night. I got uh, like four good rockets in me, and then it starts hurting. <laughs> That's what happens when you get old. Peyton Manning over here. All right. Chad Kelly, you got our. R-E-S-B-C-T. Let's keep it with another quarterback. A oh, starting quarterback. We're going to go back to some starter. Oh, here a real a player. A real player. Somebody who could offer some some upside. I want to put some respect on Joe Flacco's name. Perennially disrespected for the longest time. I mean, did y'all read that Roto World blurb? It was, it was, you know, is Flacco elite for a minute when he had that ridiculous playoff run, which, by the way, was pretty much the best playoff run anybody's ever had. It was I'm a not, good run. It was a solid run. Was got, a, run. Got, got him paid. paid and set the whole market for the rest of the world. Really turned the NFL upside down. And he's down. he's mostly been very mediocre for the last couple of years. But this last offense, year he had an, a, a back injury to begin the preseason. Right. He's really been worse than mediocre. He's been the worst quarterback but, in the league. Not the worst. Whoa, no, whoa, no, his, whoa. no, 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 no. Like his his he's like thirty one and thirty two out of thirty two, and everything that matters. I promise. I can't tell you where the stat came from. It's been a while since I've seen it, but like the worst quarterback in the league. Maybe last year he was terrible. <clears throat> been really, no bad. way Kaiser wasn't worse. Well, I'm, worse than Kaiser. R- regardless, like <laughs> he might he might have been really bad last year. He was injured, and he might have been. He was. Who was he, he have on his team? To well, throw that's what to. I'm getting at. Like. In the last couple of years, there hadn't been anybody around this guy. If I wouldn't have been so rudely interrupted here, <laughs> there's not been anything around this guy to make anything happen. Like, I, you can say he's not great, and like there's a couple of quarterbacks in this league who can take people not having anybody around him and and make everybody good. Like, i.e., Aaron Rodgers. Not like obviously Jordy's good, and Randall Cobb when he's on the field is good, and Devontae Adams is is good. But the you know the knock on the Packers is, is there's always some sort of subpar talent around Aaron Rodgers, and when he's in there, he's a Super Bowl contender. Right. Joe Flacco is not that guy. No, nope. clearly. Nope. I'm not saying that he is, but like he's just been left at the bottom barrel of things, and and right now they've they've surrounded him with at least a little bit of talent. Alex Collins looks good. They got Crabtree. John Brown looks good. They got Willie Sneed in the slot. They got a couple other guys behind them. Picked they got a, some tight ends. They got a slew of tight ends who Hayden Hurst like. Is, is probably going to be on the field a good bit because he's able to block and do things. They've, they Then they spent another pick on uh, Andrews. Andrews, and they have another. They got Max Williams over there and Nick Boyle. They got a slew of tight ends that they're looking for something out of. Got Kenneth Dixon and Buck Allen. Right, who are, are look pretty solid. Buck Might Allen be. stays looking good. He gets disrespected. You need to put some respect on his name. Kenneth Dixon looked good last night. So there's the the Ravens, you know, that de- you know the defense is going to come correct 9 out of 10, 10 times. All of a sudden the Ravens second and third running backs, they might be some of the best in the league. Right. So I mean, I just wanted to put a little I'm not saying Flacco's this awesome quarterback by any means, but I think he gets out of the 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 dumpster here and and it will will be very relevant for absolutely relevant in Superflex for sure. Well, yeah. And then I think on, even in twelve quarterback leagues, there's probably going to be some, some streaming some value. Streaming, streaming value. value. There. If you're an auction, he costs you a dollar. 
If you're in a dra- in a in a snake draft, he's undrafted. If you're not, if it's not super flex or two QB, so really what we would need, what we need out of Flacco is Flacco to play good, so we can get those fantasy points from the outside guys, right. from the receivers and the backs and the tight ends. I mean, I'm not itching to be, but yes. The first round quarterback selection, you bring in a guy, you bring in a Heisman Trophy winner and put him on the bench underneath Flacco. And, you know, it's here you go. Flacco's upset about it and he's on fire and he's come out slinging. And Flacco why wouldn't he be? Fantastic. This, they, they make, you make the comparison and what happened with Alex Smith last year. You bring in Patrick Mahomes. Matt, pa, Alex Smith has the best year of his career. He's like, well, oh, you, you brought in somebody to throw it downfield. Watch this. Right. And so let's see what Flacco. They Give got. me a healthy Flacco with some talent around him. And yeah. all of a sudden he's not 31 or 32 anymore. He's right. probably more like 10. 11. Completely retooled the offense like Casey 12, 13. said. 13. Roto, Roto World is the ultimate disrespect uh, people. They pass these slighted compliments like whoa. Listen to this last sentence of this last blurb. Flacco's rekindling, sorry, Flacco's rekindled fire along with the Ravens much improved pass weaponry may make Flacco a useful QB too at times. That's what Casey just said. No, may make like, him useful. No, he's definitely going to be useful in two quarterback leagues i'm down to have him as my second quarterback for oh sure. yeah i think he may i think he i don't makes think he's great, may make may be useful sometimes i think he makes like, a fantastic target in two quarterbacks yeah. leagues. You, you either spend a bunch of your budget on on one good quarterback and then you go get a Tannehill or a flacco and i think you'll be just fine right well if, if we're going to go with that route for a second i'll definitely need flacco to be my third quarterback no, I got to see. I got to see more than what you want to over. You want to not necessarily. Uh, we're you're, gonna, we're uh, not going to overreact to the other players. We're talking about Corey. no, no. You're not. But I'm not going to. Yeah, he's retooled the offense. I want to see it for more than three plays in the preseason before I'm like, okay, I'm good with him being my second it's quarterback. Not like we've never seen him not be good before. I've seen him be super flex. You don't I've even have better. a second quarterback, so you take Joe Flacco all day yeah. as your second. Yeah, quarterback. Yeah, we do. We got Bortles and Dak that's, and that, Tyrod that's, Taylor. That's with our shared ones. With your solo team, you don't have a second quarterback. I got two rookies. Right. Exactly. And Matt Ryan, which I paid the least of any starting quarterback in the league for. Thank you very much. And I was like a sure dollar more on Alex Smith. For well, the point is, is that if I'm playing two QBs, I don't want to spend a bunch of money on my second quarterback. And I think I can play. I can just get another one. Flacco will be startable all year long. Mm. And it hasn't just been a couple of passes. It's been all preseason. The guy's been awesome. It's been all camp. The and guy's all camp, been awesome. Yep. Put some talent around him and just give me just give me a serviceable guy as my second person in Superflex. I'm going to beat you to death because I just drafted. I had... 130 extra bucks to spend on other players. Nice. I don't need a third quarterback. Yeah. Joe Flacco. I you mean, get a quarterbacks, little bit of, you need three. Oh. I like to have three. You don't like you to don't have, have three. <laughs> you drafted two rookies. I, have, I currently have three. I'm One's saying I not even three. startable. Maybe. Sometime. Definitely not. He looks like the worst quarterback in the preseason. We'll see. Oh, uh, Lamar Jackson? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Joe Flacco, you get some. R-E-S-P-C-T. Even if Corey doesn't want to give it to you. Nope, Corey won't give it to you. Corey's got some slighted over that here. That league is completely slanted toward the running backs. I spent 75% of my budget towards the running backs and tight ends. It's a running back We're tight talking end about league. Joe Flacco, not your... Casey's sitting there trying to tear apart my super flex We're strategy. tearing apart your your it's your your, your uh, argument that you want league. three quarterbacks. You don't have three quarterbacks. Well, that not yeah, that league specifically three because anyway. I got six. I got five great running backs and five tight ends. <clears throat> Excuse me, because it's a running back tight end league. Well, whatever. you got. It's a super flex, so... You got to start two. I mean, I I'm definitely want to start two, and I'll be definitely I'll be down to start Flacco all year long in a two QB. Oh, lead. I'm I'm with you 100. percent I was trying to get Tannehill as my second quarterback to start all year long with with a rookie backup and or a Mason Rudolph kind of backup deal. I'm just I'm not interested in spending a all bunch right. of money on two really good quarterbacks. I'm not interested in talking about Joe Flacco anymore. Let's mo- let's move along. We already hit the button. Let's do it. Fair enough. Let's do it. Next guy. Give me it again. Next guy. Give me it again. <laughs> Let's go with Rashard Matthews here. Let's put some respect on what this man just got. He got a contract. He got paid. Let's give him some respect. Yeah, he's been absent. Not necessarily paid, paid, but he got paid for another year. $7.75 million. Paid enough. That's uh, That's enough. enough. It's enough to know that he's going to be a piece, an integral piece here. And we haven't seen much from him in the preseason. What happened saying he was hurt. Is Rashard Matthews, was he really ever hurt, or were we just seeing the Patriots of... Tennessee here, Matt Patricia, oh, and saying, lines. "Oh yeah, you know he's been a little bus up. Yeah, nothing to see here. He's got a foot. These really, he not was just like the holdout you're looking for. Right, this is not the holdout. Your little looking. Jedi mind trick on you. Yeah, 
But good for him. Good for Richard. Yeah. It's nice. Hopefully, hopefully he does come back because he's somebody that I really like. And yeah. I think is definitely disrespected just in general. Even obviously he hasn't been playing, so you're getting a little concerned about what was going on here. Right. But, but I think now, you put him on the field, and you need to give him all of the. Meant to hit the other one. <laughs> hit it. Hit it anyway. Just fumbles all over the place. All right. Anybody got anything else to add with Rashad Matthews? Mm, get him. I mean, in that new offense coming up, if he takes that mixture of Cooper Cup and Robert Woods role, I'm uh, not that I don't think Corey Davis is going to be awesome, but you get you let your big bad boy take half the coverage away and let's hit somebody wide open coming across the field. Knack for scoring touchdowns, a couple years away from scoring nine of them. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was really uh, going to come on. out there. I was going to put uh, – Taewon Taylor in this respect category here because he's been getting all sorts of love and getting all sorts of looked looked good on his little screen pass to the house looked like he was in fast forward everybody else was in slow mo right but with Rashard I mean I'm still fine with anything you want to do with uh, Taewon Taylor you want to go pick him up or anything respect though I, I, mean, I think I think that's any. fine but with Rashard Matthews being I'm I'm definitely s- pumping the brakes just a hair on him uh, a good bit. Give me I Richard. mean, give me give me some Taewon too. I mean, you can't take away what he did, but Rashard comes back and he's the veteran and he's you know. I just think he's going to be the guy on the field, I, majority I, of the time. Yeah, it depends kind on of. how they deploy the wide receivers. They might both be out there plenty enough, but I think Rashard goes up there first and most often. I agree with that. Right. Yeah, but can't take anything away from what we've seen. From so Taewon. we're going to put some. No, absolutely not. We're going to hit you with a double a tandem of backup Redskin receivers to put some respect on. Yeah. Yeah. R-E-S-B-C-T. We're going to hit you with some Cam Sims and some Trey Quinn. Trey Quinn being Mr. Irrelevant, mm-hmm. which you got to love that. And Cam Sims did blow a big catch in this uh, last preseason game, but he also made some really totally nice contested himself. catches. Totally redeemed And looks just like a huge man out there. So large. So, so big. want to put some respect on Cam Sims' name. I want to put some respect on Trey Quinn's name, who just looks super tight in everything he does out there. He may not be the most athletic, big, phys- most physical guy, but he knows how to work the field. He knows what he's doing out there. He knows how to slide around on the field in zone coverage. He knows how to beat man coverage. Like, Trey Quinn's a really good player, and if anything, if for some reason Crowder doesn't come back, Trey Quinn could be the guy. Yeah, and I mean, like you, Cam Sims, like you said, after the he was playing big and physical and hard. He was playing like a grown man before the drop, but after the drop, he came back playing yeah. mad. He was playing mad, big man, terrible drop. Yeah, and, and he came he back. He knew it, and the team came back to him. The quarterback came back to him. It wasn't obviously Alex Smith in there throwing the ball to him, but it was whether it was the play call, play design, the progression, the read, the t- co- the coach saying, "Hey, give him another chance," or the or the quarterback being like, "Hey, I throw this guy in practice all the time because we are the twos and the threes together. I know what he can do." Came back to him, gave him opportunities. He was playing mad, he was producing, redeemed himself just like Jay Wayne said, and you can K- Cam Sims is definitely somebody to be on he needs to be on your radar if you didn't see that game, if you hadn't seen him in preseason. He's a huge man, very athletic out there looking on film. And just, I would definitely be watching him and Trey Quinn because was it Trey Quinn that I was telling you? They said he was catching jugs machine. He was standing yeah, really, really close to so. the jugs machine and snagging everything. And I think the coaches said that they he got a grip. He can catch. He's got the strongest hands of any receiver he's ever seen. Yeah. So you got a little slot guy that could just catch anything close to the quarterback catching rockets. I don't think we think Alex Smith is throwing rockets, but. Yeah, hey, put, hey, hey that, watch that disrespect. That, that noodle arm didn't hurt Deshaun Watson last year. Do we have to add another name? Do we have to put Alex Smith on this damn to... list? <laughs> yeah. Is someone oh relevant God. here? <laughs> Golly, just trashing quarterbacks. No way. No oh, I love Alex Smith. Uh, it doesn't seem like it. Oh. Roto World blurbs over just slight handed uh, Alex compliments. Smith got us a championship in the FFPC last year. Let's put respect on one more guy's name. I think we're gonna we're gonna wrap this thing up with Bilal Powell. Casey's boy. Bilal Powell. I mean, Casey was beating the drum for this guy last year. You go you go and look at some PFF efficiency metrics, and he's he crushes those. You watch him on the field in this preseason game. He's doing everything you want him to do. He's getting the Mark Ingram treatment for some reason in New York, where he may or may not have slept with a coach's wife. Obviously, that's not really true, but that's what we 
pegged what happened to Mark Ingram for a while. And I don't know what's going on with Bilal Powell. They brought him in there, and they just don't seem to want to give him any usage. But every time he touches the ball, he's super efficient with it and looks good. Like in this whole preseason game, he was giving it to you every way you needed it. He was running you over. He was juking you out of your pants. He was pass blocking, and he was sucking up every target you threw near him. Absolutely. And two years ago, they ran out of running backs, and he crushed it. And it's just like going into last year, you're like, okay, well, he did so well. They have to give him the opportunities, and they just keep – piling people in there not named Powell every right. time they get a chance and he's old and long in the tooth or whatever you want to say but he looks good with the ball in his hands I'm not I don't I'm not upset about uh Elijah Maguire at all but you know he needs to be starting over Elijah Maguire right now let him Elijah Maguire be your be your future and let let below if you're gonna let Crowell be your feature guy let Powell be your sole lone feature back and get or satellite back and and just only use uh What's his name? McGuire. McGuire. If, if something happens to one of those two guys, like I like McGuire just fine, but Bilal Powell is clearly a better player than McGuire is right now. Well, we'll know, we'll know exactly what happened with the coaches and stuff with Powell. If McGuire comes back from a broken foot and gets, takes the role right back after Powell, they've, he showed him again, how good he is given opportunity. Give me the ball, hand it to me and throw it to me and show me, let me show you what I can do. Yes. He's 30 years old. McGuire might be the future. I was big on Mc, Elijah McGuire as like a late round dynasty startup pick because why not? And, sure, sure. And, and I'm and not against that by any great, means. Right now sure. he's a great stash. I love rostering him on my team. Why not? He's a great stash if you got a roster spot for him. But yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens because they're saying Pal McGuire might not be out too long. No disrespect to McGuire. Whoa. No disrespect to McGuire. I just think Powell gets completely disrespected and yeah. you need to put some respect on that man's name and let him do what he does because every time he does it, he's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and just like that <laughs> just like that all right well that was uh that was the last of this uh segment here i don't know what we told you there but definitely got to put some respect on these dudes names and uh monitor a lot of these younger dudes going forward make sure you got some room pick them up stash them star them up watch them moving forward let's uh this was all for aretha this was all for aretha she deserves it rest in peace the queen let's ride out let's ride out give you some aretha on the break all right, we'll be back with more Married to the Game. Welcome back. I hope we definitely put some respect on Aretha's name there, first and foremost. That's what we were trying to do there. Absolutely. Just make sure you pay your dues, pay your homage. She paved the way for a lot of things, so great to hear that little ditty on the on the break. Yeah, and That's if you're on YouTube, go check out the videos we just put out for uh, for who needs some respect in the NFL. It's kind of our. That's how we. Paid our homage to Aretha. We gave you some players that need some need some respect and need your attention and guys you should be looking at right. if you're in deeper bench leagues. Making and some names for themselves in the preseason offseason here. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the theme there, but we're going to jump into a little preseason matchup here and discuss some guys. But first, we'll hit you with a little Twitter plug. You can catch us at the FF Dynasty. We all have individual handles. You can see Jay Wayne at Jay Wayne's World. You can catch Dynasty Big Co. at Dynasty Big Co. And I'm at I am C Myers. I keep it simple over here. You're like I am C Myers at I am C Myers. Right. Um, definitely check out our website, theffdynasty.com. You got to be staying on that thing for all of our stuff and things. It's our satchel slash briefcase of classic vintage briefcase. All of our content and uh, a little bit of rookie rankings up there right now. And you can search for any of the videos or players that we've covered. Definitely hit the forums up. For um, sure. Register there and, and, and join the community there that's starting and get your questions answered and discussed. We're going to talk about some of them on the show. And, and if you want an extra hour of content a, a, a week, make sure to give us the $5 holler on Patreon. You can find that at the website or at patreon.com. You can search the FF Dynasty. You can backslash the FF, uh, Dynasty. The FF Dynasty, however you want to get there. Yeah, if you um, just go to ffdynasty.com, it's in the middle of the page, all the way to the right, it says become a patron takes more time than actually is really going to come out of your bank account every month. takes a few seconds to get that credit card out, put that number in, and then you're in, pay you're in the business. Way. You, pay got an hour, you got an extra hour of our sweet voices. Yeah. But like Jay Wayne said a couple weeks ago about the website, like he's the amount of time and effort that he's put in to breaking down 
each and every person individually off of the podcast. We get on here and we run our mouths all night long. And then Jay Wayne goes back and cuts it up. We got first round pick over here in the production department. You can go search on our website for key players instead of having to dig back through a, a, you know, a whole podcast. If you want to go in there and look up something that we said on Trey Burton, you can go in there and find stuff on every single player. And the amount of time that Jay's put into this is absolutely ridiculous. So go over there to the website. It's build more and more. It's you know it's not seven years of content or anything yet, but it's out there. The amount that's going in, where we've come, is from like zero to sixty. It went from six, upgrades every day, six, six to midnight over there. It's a party for sure, <laughs> for sure. So let's let's get into uh, some some Broncos Bears matchup, and uh, let's start on the Bears side. Let's do it. We're gonna go a little Mitch Trubisky. Yeah. Well, Excuse me, Mitchell. Let's Trubisky. start off with Mitchell punchable face Trubisky. Such a punchable face. No disrespect. All right. Hey, don't be talking about my quarterback. That's your okay? quarterback. It's all. It's my quarterback now. Why? Because I'm so Burton heavy. It ain't even oh. funny. Don't be talking about my quarterback. Well, let's pump the brakes on Burton for a second. Typical big co jumping four <laughs> spots ahead in the show sheet. We'll get to Burton. You talking about my quarterback? We got a lot to unload on Burton, but let's start with Mitchell here. <laughs> I think he's been an up and down through the preseason here. I think this 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 club um, is really going as far as the ups and downs of Mitchell Trubisky is going to take him. I think what you saw at a, on like a second and nine there, you saw a nice scramble from from Mitch. Um, I think that is really the key to unlocking this offense and keeping it out of trouble. Don't make Mitchell force anything that he doesn't, you know see and, and, is, and is a nice easy throw that he feels comfortable making like there's some athleticism with this guy move him around a little bit tell him that it's okay to take off obviously you want him to slide you don't want him to be doing anything stupid but there is some underrated athleticism with Mitchell Trubisky um, and I think they really need to lean on that and and just not make him force anything yeah well I think that you know they had a rough week one and you saw coming back into week two let's get some real quick easy plays drawn up I mean, it's Nagy, what's that? It's a tree bird. <laughs> yeah, well, Nagy, he's coming. He's a Andy Reid disciple, and Andy Reid has been one of the innovators in let's take the West Coast offense and morph it into more than just quick passes. Let's go in there and set things up and stretch the defense out, and obviously Tyreek Hill helps all that stuff. And the Bears have different versions of Tyreek Hill, not necessarily that top-end quality, but they got different – they got – they got weapons all of a sudden. They went and they spent money on that offense, hot and heavy in the offseason, and they made draft. They traded up for a wide receiver in Anthony Miller. They're trying You haven't to, even seen Allen Robinson be able to play right, and they give signed, him that alpha one. They signed Allen Robinson. They draft Anthony Miller. They bring in Burton on a huge contract. We'll talk about more him in a second. But all this stuff, like what you just said about Mitchell Trubisky, the key to that offense for unlocking it. He is the he's the key to the ceiling for the offense, no doubt about it. And that's a lot of weight and pressure for a young quarterback to see a team go and spend all this money and draft capital, trade up for a second round wide receiver who looks awesome, and say, Okay, buddy, we're setting the table for you. Yeah. But good for the Bears to not wait and say, Oh, well, you know, right there in your fourth year of you your like rookie a guy, con- go get a guy. Like and the, let the, him do basically the opposite of what the Cowboys are doing for Dak Prescott on his rookie co- contract. The Bears are like, We're not gonna blow this opportunity to spend, we're gonna the Rams, spend a bunch of money. Rams spending money right. while Jared Golf's cheap. Right. You know? So I think like the last like ten I don't I don't know what the actual number is, but like the, the quarterbacks who were being paid like the highest in the league or the highest average in the league, I saw this somewhere today, that it was basically, it's been in the last 10 years, it's been Eli Manning and, and Ben Roethlisberger. Everybody else has been like average or well below average of the median salary for a quarterback who's won the Super Bowl in like the last 10 years. Gotcha. Um, so, right, right. So what you're saying is is 100% right. That's that's the big thing right now is if you can get like the Seahawks were doing. Exactly, you know, they and, did and it. the Eagles just did. And like you can spend a ton of, like the Eagles went and spent a bunch of money on a defensive line. They had... Seven guys you could rotate They had the in there. best defensive line you could get, right. and then they got Michael Bennett. Right. And then they added to it. They brought in and Michael they, Bennett. They, they to let it. some guys go, on, on the, you know. Well, but, yeah, but they kept but but they, they added, kept the big ones. They kept the best ones they had. For sure. And, and then you saw the Rams spend all this money and trying to trying to get over the, the next hump of, of, of where they need to go. And you've seen it time and time again with quarterbacks in the rookie deal. And this has been like kind of a Rubik's cube that people have figured out a little bit since the quarterback's been a slotted position. It's like a loophole is a successful rookie quarterback contract. Right. So Mitchell Trubisky to me, I, I, I don't hate Mitchell Trubisky. I, I certainly like some pieces around him, 
probably going to end up missing out on the Mitchell Trubisky because I'm uh, he's just somebody that I've just never find myself drafting or wanting yeah. to put on my team. So as you know, I don't dislike Mitchell Trubisky by any means. He's just going to be a guy that is I'm probably going to miss out on if he is good because I'm just I'm kind of staying away from him for the most part. I'm definitely going to miss the train because I, I haven't ever really felt it. We've had this discussion before. Uh, I just. And he hasn't really showed me anything, you know, this offseason. I know it's just two preseason games and just, you can't be getting overreacting or anything. But I just – you mentioned his ups and downs. Like, I feel like he just had more downs than I've seen ups. I, he just – he yeah. seems to be missing and he had, balls. And he, you know, he's, John Fox doesn't help you out when your that's team's very already true. bad in the dumps and you don't have a ton of weapons around you. Just that's We were talking true. about Flacco at the beginning of this right. show. I mean, you, you – you, you know, there's there's a bad system and, and nobody to throw it to. You you could have some downs. Yeah. He just he just looks a little confused. I don't know if that's the punchable face or not. He just looks like he <laughs> doesn't quite know what's going on out there. He bobbled that snap, caused a safety uh, up in his own end zone. I, I don't want to crucify him. Well, they put that him. one just, on white hair, and we'll get to the line stuff in a minute. Um, well, that was a good... good but, but real quick, like, one thing I want to say about Mitchell is a lot of things that I'm reading are that this guy... Uh, he cares. The, you're hard pressed to find another person who cares as much about this team than he does, which is something that I love to hear. Yeah, I love to hear. Uh, you know, and it's. I'm just. Okay, I'm not buying it. I'm kind of with Jay Wayne in this. I'm not going to say that he's going to be bad. I just not believing that he's going to be elite. Well, that's I, feel, cool. I don't feel good about the pieces I have around him. Like well, my, my Allen Robinson stock, I haven't even seen him on the field together. Don't feel great about it right but now. Well, you like, got you got. I first, like the system. First round draft pick past Paxton Lynch that just became the number three because he plays Fortnite too much. And you got <laughs> that's but that's that's that's, that's serious yeah. business here. You got a first round draft pick quarterback who's playing video games, and you got Mitchell Trubisky who's hard pressed to find somebody that tries harder and cares more. You know so that's that's a good and I, that was a good point Casey just made about not only were you in the Stone Age John Fox offense last year you also had the worst supporting cast to try to produce outside of a decent offensive line and a good running back so all those things he's a super young quarterback still very limited college resume other than one really good season in North Carolina. So his actual number of games played, snaps taken, is really low for somebody that went that high in a draft. Right. And so he's he was so, a gamer in that season. He's though. a gamer, but he's super young, super you know, very low on the uh, experience level. You know, he's not like a quarterback that's coming in and play to start it three years in a row in college or anything like that. So like maybe it's the punchable face, but like say he's green. He's, he's very he's green. Very green, but and like. As far as the, I'm staying, I I don't I'm not gonna pay the price to get Mitchell Trubisky because that's my whole quarterback philosophy. I'm gonna stay out of that conversation right now. So I, I'm probably not gonna have Mitch because he costs too much. But I don't think I think just this is the same system and you know Nagy will tweak it and make it his own. But he's been over there with Andy Reid. They boys are crunching numbers and X's and O's like crazy over there. I, think, I like the system. I don't think I, he'll be terrible. I just don't no, think I'm he's saying, be No, I'm saying, but he doesn't even have to be elite to get fantasy points. Sure, sure. You know what I mean? Like, he might not be out there carrying his team on his back and a rodging it up. Well, I mean, but like, can just be, the way this be an team, Alex Smith. The, right, but, at, but Alex Smith was QB3 last year. Right, you right, know what right. I mean? So, in that system... But, you know, he's 34... Yeah, you know, yeah, took him a yeah. While. Mental never, prime, right. that quarterback mental prime. I like to talk about. He's obviously in that. So you're not taking Mitchell Trubisky. I hope you're not paying up for Mitchell Trubisky to th feel like I don't think you necessarily do. But there he, is, if, yeah, yeah. But and if you're if you're like Mitchell Trubisky is all of a sudden your favorite quarterback, that's great. Pay up for him and then get Alex Smith on the cheap and plug him in in week one. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I think the system will make fantasy points for the quarterback because the weapons are all over the place and because look what happened last week. All they were doing was trying to get some quick things, some first downs to build momentum and confidence in this young quarterback like right. we talked about. And what that ended up doing was taking them straight down the field, even though it was supposed to be like straight vanilla offense and not doing much. The coach had to come out and be like, you know, let's do a couple of plays because we need to move the ball, get some first yeah. downs. And it resulted in points. Well, one huge bonus, as you mentioned, that Mitchell Trubisky has is he has this great offensive line to lean on, which could be one of the better ones in the league. Um and a solid run game to to boot to go with all that and you know it feels really good to not have to beat the drum for Jordan Howard oh, man. like like we had been and we'll we'll get to that in a second I want to give this offensive line uh it's due here for a second and just say that this this group of hevs up front <laughs> is is just so solid and they they worked on improving it um even further they they spent I think a top 35 or 40 draft pick on a center James Daniels from Iowa who's one of the better centers in the game um, right now they have uh, Cody Whitehair holding it down to that position um, so 
when you said that he, they had that bad, uh, Mitchell Trubisky had that fumble in the end zone. A lot of people were putting that on Whitehair because he has had a, a little bit of an issue with snaps, and he's not a natural center. He made that uh, switch for them, and he's been playing really well, uh, with the exception of some some snapping issues here and there. I think Daniels has been a little nicked, the the rookie from Iowa. Um, so they've been a little hesitant, and they're just trying to get him ramped up. So a lot of people in 39th overall, a lot of thank you. A lot of people are that are in that circle are saying that, you know, if, if, if you want to get Daniels involved this year, now's the time to get him integrated into this system and let uh, white hair slide over to left guard, which is where the only spot in this entire line where they have any sort of a hole, which uh, Cush, if you remember uh, the Jeff Fisher hard knocks was was one of was the center for the Rams that year. Right now he's filling in at left guard, which isn't a terrible option for you, but he's certainly wouldn't be a white hair if white hair could slide over there. And they were thinking about maybe putting James Daniels in that situation. But the rest of this group is super solid from uh, Leno to uh, Long, uh, Massey. This is a really solid group from left to right, front to back. And if they could get the center, if they could get Daniels in there and get the left guard situated with white white hair sliding back over there, uh, this is this is a group that the the ceiling is or the roof is the ceiling or however Michael Jordan said that <laughs> right. ceiling is the roof, <laughs> which spells which, which spells really really good things for your fantasy team if it's built with a couple bears, right? Because the, the we've seen it in a couple even re- very very recently with the Giants and the Bengals last year when your offensive line is trash and and the Vikings two years ago it, when when your offensive line is trash your whole game you can't do anything you're getting blown up. And so now your Bears have had a really solid offensive line for a couple of years and a 1970 playbook and Jordan Howard been right. r- running solid behind those guys. And now you got the offense with improvements. And it's, and what you're just telling me there is that maybe the offensive line's even getting better. And a 39th overall pick is solid capital we'll throw on a center. Uh, and, I, and I'm Ace, a big he's a fan. Hawkeye and I'm he's, a fan. Yeah, exactly. You know what Iowa's right. putting out good offensive line. Solid center. I'm a big fan of strength on a strength. If you you know put go ahead and throw another offensive line. If you got a good offensive line, throw another one at it. You know. Yeah, and they, and they let uh, Sutton or Sitton. Sitting, uh, sitting. Sitting. They let Sitton ride out. And everyone was wondering why. And he'd, he'd been a little up and down, but they've they've since kind of mended that fence with all these moves that they've made. I mean, I believe Cush was on the team well, last Sitton year. Well, Sitton got paid, too. Yeah. You know, like you can't. You, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. You, if you pay everybody on the offensive line like Dallas does, right. then you don't get to go get any fun stuff like Allen Robinson but, and Trey Burton. You know, like you said, they are in that window of being able to pay a bunch. They went and got a bunch of offensive players and then the the best thing you got going for you is that you retain Vic Fangio. I haven't dropped name dropped him in a while, but Fangio <laughs> deserves so much credit. This defense should be really good. Uh, they were good a year ago with with no love and nobody thinking that they were going to be good. And if Fangio is running your defense and you got the pieces that that the uh, Bears have, and you got a great offensive line and a good run game, which is what Jordan Howard is providing for you, I mean. Mitchell shouldn't have to, again, force anything or press anything down exactly. the field. Um, you can lean on things like your run game and, and an Allen Robinson who has some size and a schemed up tight end situation like a Burton. Um, so I, I just think that this 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 group of heads up front can can really benefit Mitchell Trubisky. And then the, again, like the Jordan Howard to not have to beat the drum of like we were at. We it seemed like we were the number one fans in the Jordan Howard uh, fan club for so long right. and it really wasn't the case it was right. just the disrespect for this man yeah. and this offensive line to boot the offensive line is awesome and this guy this is a throwback running back that nobody wants to get in front of Mm-mm. all he's done is is had 1300 yards 1200 or 1100 yards six touchdowns nine touchdowns in two seasons and been just with, basically virtually unstoppable if you give him the rock. And, and that's what we were, uh, all he did is right, uh, pick up where he left off in the preseason. He looks great. Yeah, and that's what we were talking about last year when he was getting such disrespected. We were like, well, what is the defense? Imagine if there's any sort of a passing game what that scares the, you. Yeah, what is the defense out there doing other than trying to stop Jordan Howard? Right. They got nothing to worry about. I mean, Jordan Howard's ADP has definitely been creeping up here. You, you could almost get him in the fourth round for a little while. Now he's up into the third which I still don't hate that. I mean, he just he's so he's so poised out there. He's po- he's poised to carry this team. Right. And I don't I don't think Cohen's going to come in and take snaps no necessarily way. in a run game situation. I'm sure Cohen will get a decent amount of hand handoffs, but uh Howard's going to be your 250 
plus yeah. running back here on this team. He's just and he's going to do what he does when he does it. Like he's <laughs> he's going to be scoring touchdowns. This line's awesome. And then by the way, he hasn't had a passing game the entire time he's been there. Right. Right. It's so throw that into him. all of that. Where his, are you going to stop? His body's built to be a workhorse. He can carry your team. He he gets what's blocked. He can create on his own. He's got vision and decisiveness. He shows you some patience at times. It's just all 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 around attributes. He's just not running rod, routes out of the slot or anything, but I mean, right. he can catch. He'll get you one or two catches a game. He's he's had 50 targets plus in, right. in his career and and or year to year and caught 20 ish balls both. Listen, if I can get a workhorse back that's getting 250, 276, getting 1000 yards, 6 to to 11 touchdowns and I could throw 30 30 more receptions on right. top of that. I'm that's fine. Yeah, with but me. the thing is if he gets 276 carries he's going to get a lot more than 1000 yards. His rushing lanes or running lanes are about to get a lot bigger. Right. Right. He's going to get fed the ball. Like taking Jordan Howard is is not messing it up. You're exactly. not striking out exactly. by taking Jordan Howard. He's going to get all the goal line carries. Scoring opportunities should go up with this offensive improvement and John Fox the hell out of there. I mean, you look at his game log last year, it wasn't the best from, from week to week as far as consistency goes, but he still averaged twelve and a half points and he was the only thing that that had team going that, that team had going for them. So I and, and I know that the naysayers will come out and they'll attribute any success that Jordan Howard had to to the fact that John Fox would run the ball and the negative, negative grain game. script. Right. But I mean Give this guy a positive game script Please. with a decent yeah. team and see what he could do. With the yeah. defense, it'll keep the game close and an offensive line that can sustain drives. Like This is going to be consistent production for you with Jordan Howard. And I'm, with I'm a in. huge I'm, TD upside. Right. Huge TDs. I love huge TDs. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't? All right. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about this other Bears running back here. Tariq Cohen getting a little hate because he dropped the ball. So he must not be any good. No, he can't catch. He dropped oh, it. He's I a running him. back wide receiver combo now. Yeah. Yeah, but he dropped it. I saw him drop it. He can't catch. Chubb was about to blow him up right there <laughs> for the record. But for the record, Chubb was tracking him down. He was playing linebacker on that play, not defensive end. It was impressive. But Chubb's out there running around. Anyway, we'll get to the Broncos in a little bit. Yeah. So there's definitely there was there was a just a plethora of off season write ups about how Combe was going to be used, what Combe was going to be doing. And the stock shot through the roof right now. I think you're you're seeing a little bit of dip in Cohen's stock, and it's because you know you're not seeing anything out of the preseason, and everyone's so reactionary on everything. And, and you know we're guilty of the same kind of things when it fits your narrative, of course. Um, so if you didn't like Cohen, you're hating him right now, right? Um, hmm. But do you really think that they're gonna come out here and Nagy, who's basically got this job for the offensive mind that he is, is gonna come out here and show you how he's gonna use Cohen? Come on, man. Doesn't have to. Why no would need he? to? We got Cohen. When you could just hand it off to Jordan Howard, he'll bully you down the field. Right. Ty- Tyreek Hill Jr. And no respect, no disrespect to Tyreek Hill by even bringing him into conversation with Cohen because Cohen's got to do a lot before he's into conversation with Tyreek Hill. It's just system and perceived Coaching. ability. Yeah. You know, the, the potential same type of hybrid type player. And like you said, Casey, there's no reason for the coach Nagy to come out here and show you what he's going to do with Cohen. I think maybe he showed you a little bit, though. They they gave Taquan Mizell some run, and he had smoke eight targets, caught seven balls for 29 yards and a touchdown. That's exactly what the Cowboys did with their backup without Zeke in there running those plays. They were trying right. to work those things out and letting Dak get some reps through those plays and just letting the offensive line and everything get those reps in live action against another team. And that's a, that's a good point. That's a good oh, point I about love what happened. Smoke Mizell name drop. I, I liked him as a just a throwaway last year for yeah, just coming in doing what he was. He was awesome. He was in a name draft. But again... <laughs> he looks good. He looks good again in this preseason. So definitely got to just keep your eye on. Mizell looks very elusive out there. Mm. Betty Cunningham looks good when he gets his shots. He too, always so. does. So underrated. Yeah. He's hated on. But don't, bad name. Point of this is don't be down on your Tariq Cohen shares just because he had, no, I don't went so. 0 for 1 in the preseason. And hasn't, yeah, the ball. hasn't, hasn't really shown like, like anything crazy usage or awesome plays or anything. I haven't just, showed you anything crazy since week one of last year when he came out and blew up and then the other uh, team... The game the, log was pretty solid from Tariq last year. I mean, yeah, I, I think mean, he some, had 100 targets. Yeah, he, he, he was... There's no way Tariq Cohen had 100 targets last year. Did he have 100 targets? 
You didn't have a ton of targets. Maybe not, but you probably thought you saw a couple targets when he was running back that punt return in the at the in the overtime when he got pushed out of bounds and then Jordan Howard got a touchdown. Seventy one targets. Yeah, that's not a hundred, but that's still that's still a ton. but uh, twenty of them in the first two weeks. That's I think a you lot just of say targets. things. Me? Yeah. Go 20, 20 targets in the first two weeks. Okay, twenty is a little <laughs> exaggeration, but he get if he got, I mean he got. He got a lot. See, yeah, I, you just say he, things. A little, I, a I embellish a little bit because it's fun, but I guarantee if you look at the game log, the majority of his targets came in two games because they were. He had twelve targets in game one. Okay, yeah, that, that's more than that's sixty percent of the weight of twenty. So what would he get in game two? Nine. Oh, that's how many? Nineteen. That's twenty-one. That's how that math works Ooh, out. Yeah, it is. Thank so you, you meant for twenty me. combined, not in each. Yeah, but tw- uh, yeah, right. exactly. I was right. one under. It was twenty-one targets in two games, so I didn't. It was twelve nine, sh- and then four four one three 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 six two. So I was four. dead on. Man, I'm hmm. right. How about not that? bad, Big Co. Not he finished bad. the season with eight targets. <laughs> Eighty. Eight. Eight. Oh, eight. Last, oh, last, last game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Week seventeen. Anyway, all right. Enough of the Cohen talk. Well, the Bears certainly weren't trying to tip their hand with what they got planned for Tariq Cohen, but they sure as hell showed you what they got in store for Trey Burton. It seemed that way. Seemingly, if was, you watch this game, it was undeniable that Trey Burton is about to crush it. Trey Burton coming out party. It was pretty solid. And if we were another show, we would have what that guy would call a dance party. Yeah. For this. <laughs> yeah. That's Does he true. still do that? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'll tie that in in a minute. <laughs> because I'm not going to get put him in front of Trey Burton. But we'll say we'll say his name out loud. Matt Kelly would have a dance party for Trey Burton because we have been I don't know if anybody else has been leading the charge on Burton like we've been leading the charge nah. we started we, last year we, we gave you we gave you Burton when he was still on the waivers. waiver wire we gave you unless you had a super bit super super deep bench league we gave you Burton while he was still on the waiver wire at the end of 17 we 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 hammered him pre free uh, agency. agency when cheap money he was he was he was an all star on the cheap money podcast. Go pick him what, up before he gets go somewhere else. Put pick him up before he gets signed in free agency to be somebody's top tight end, and then he goes to the Chiefs, which couldn't have been a better fairy tale ending. And by he, Chiefs, you mean Bears? My bad. I'm thinking about Nagy and the Chiefs. Yeah, way to way to be on my back right now. Way you. to give me way to way to fix me up there. So <laughs> he goes and he joins the Bears. Who Casey breaks it down for you, and he tells you about Nagy leaving. The Chiefs in our free agency fallout. In the free agency fallout in April. And ties and connects these dots with Peterson from the Eagles, who also came from the Chiefs. And all you know, them boys were like, Hey, should I give should I give Burton the most money in free agency of any tight end this year? And Peterson's his boy. Nagy's his you know, he's sure. Those things worked out. Yeah, and you're coming from a a system where it's you had a it was very tight end centric. It's just weird how all these things worked out. And so it, and weird. It's just coaching like, doesn't matter. It's almost like these schemes and these coaching things and these regimes and these trees. They all kind of show each other how to do things and what to do and how they like to do things. And you know, you got a Travis Kelsey. And again, I've said this multiple times. I'm not calling Trey Burton Travis Kelsey. We're simply just suggesting that he's going to play some sort of a similar role to an Ertz. Or a Kelsey. He is not Ertz or Kelsey, but he's going to be playing that slot, that high slot percentage, that move all around the formation, that wide receiver, that tight end playing wide receiver. Like, he may not be as big as those other two guys, but he's very athletic. He can block well enough, and Nagy's going to scheme him. And you just saw that Mitchell was super comfortable pumping the ball to right. Trey Burton. Mitchell well, looked the best throwing it to Trey Burton. Exactly. Well, we t- we were when we were talking about Mitchell Trubisky, we were talking about Nagy saying, "Okay, the first game of the preseason, we went out there and we looked kind of stale and it was a little bit of a bummer because a Chicago offense has been pumped up all offseason long just like the Titans would get in the floor into town." So, Nagy says, "Okay, well, we got to use a little bit of Burton here to make things easy." And he looked fluid. He looked like a gazelle. And he's hand, he just just nabbing anything, just catching anything with his hands that get anywhere close to him. Hard to tackle. Making just plays outside of his Plenty of yak. And also, I, dude looks just, I mean, yeah, he's not physically as big and dominant as Travis Kelsey. But guess what? Travis Kelsey didn't fit. He's not big and dominant like Gronk. He's a small, he's, a, he's not nearly Gronk. But he's out there putting up Gronk type numbers. Right. And if Burton puts out Kelsey type numbers, Jesus, you didn't pay anything for him for months and months. We've been giving him to you for free. And 
This and it was one quarter of football. Oh my and gosh! It was like one drive almost. One, two one, really. Two drives. Yeah. Two drives. One and, catch on one drive, and then I think the rest, the other four on another. Well, it, the very first play, the ver- the second down of the of the game for the Bears, and they have this little disguised screenplay where Trey Burton starts off in line, which is like one of the only times I saw him in line, and he's like he kind of chips Nick Chubb as he's coming around to rush, chips him off just enough. Gives gives the quarterback enough time to dump it over to him. Immediately has a guy in his face, like sidesteps him, and then Im- the, the athleticism just jumps off the page, and he jets up the field for nine yards after the catch. Incredible acceleration on that play. He and it was really he almost did like a half circle around that mm-hmm. defensive lineman that got in his way. There was no way that guy could even get a hand on him. Mm-mm. Burton just jumped off the page, jumped off the screen, like you're saying there, Jay. Yep. It just it is all it took was that one play to be like, okay, that wow, okay, and then. Three or four more catches later, and yeah, a touchdown. I mean, the sec the second catch, he's lined up out wide, out wide right, finds a soft spot in the zone, makes a nice out catch. Out wide on, right, but a little tighter to the formation than than you know. He's not like wide. He's the only guy out, out there. He's, the, though, he's single, right? yeah, for single sure. wide right, and he goes and finds a soft spot in the zone, makes a a nice catch on a ball that's outside of his frame, extends his arms fully to make the catch sure it's awesome looking third catch he's again it's an out route on from the right side out wide fourth catch he's on he's on the left side of the formation in a little bunch a little three wide receiver set where the first two guys clear out and he runs a slant underneath to get the first down look at it's just he's all out all over the place and it's just so obvious that they're scheming him yep. the ball and, and then that, the touchdown play on was comes was, across was the fantastic. formation came, came was was lined up on the left came across the formation behind the formation yep. while the play was going on kind of act like maybe he was going to try to get in the way of the of the free rusher coming around there and just kind of skirt it around. It him. almost looks like it was about to be that little shovel pass right. that they did in Kansas City with Kelsey so, it so froze, many times. It did two things. It froze that player, gave the quarterback another second, and then he was wide open in, right. in the flat over there and hit him and he waltzed into the touch in, into the end zone for the for the score and it was it was just fantastic. It's just so weird how <laughs> how all that worked out. How yeah. you got a tight end centric coach who had just had a great tight end his first order of business was to go pay a tight end who may i don't know if him and peterson are boys or not but they certainly know one another and it's just a weird coincidence that he got that guy off of that team who was the second fiddle to a really good player who also plays a lot in the slot who also plays a lot like a wide receiver who's not a huge inline guy right well that's what i was saying was how many times when's the last time you saw a backup tight end which you know, Burton was playing in Ertz's shadow in, in case he's been beating a drum for Burton being better than anybody's given him credit for for two years now. And then you get out and you get a free agency deal that gives you a ridiculous amount of money for your limited production, but limited opportunity, limited snaps, because Ertz has kind of semi been healthy the last two years. And but if like, he hasn't been, he's been awesome. But when Ertz missed the games, Burton was crushing, and that's what we were trying to tell you last year. Is like, well, when he gets a chance, he's freaking awesome, right? And he's about to be a free agent, and here right. and it happened. There and was just too many things that made sense that went together for the usage to not. And obviously, we're not in season again. I said this earlier. We, you can overreact to things that are happening and make it fit your narrative, and that's what we're doing right now. But the narrative that we put together was there was a whole bunch of facts and reasoning and logic that all went into that right and not and you know all these things matter so, it wasn't just some numbers right. machine it wasn't just like it, oh i right. love i love trey burton because of his athleticism yeah it wasn't because he got a good uh, his you put his 40 time and his broad jump together and you make a burst score and all of right. a sudden he's supposed to be good at football because right. if that was the case um, but what was Dalvin, his college dominant? If that was the case, right. Dalvin Cook wouldn't have been good. Remember how right. that worked out? So Burton came in there, and, and, the first, and actually week one of the preseason, the very first drive, I texted Casey. I said, how funny is that that the Bears offense looks like the Chiefs? And, yeah, they had zero like high-end players in there, and it was just a very – just. Get a st- they just, went right down the field and did all right with Chase right Daniels. They went right down the field. That's what I'm saying. But it, but it was just the actual X's and O's, which yeah. some people think is ridiculous. It's narrative. But you know what it was? It was facts. Just like Casey logic said. Logic is and, what it is. Right. It's not. It's Logic's like, not always correct, but that's the word is logic. Travis May was all upset about how Trey Burton was getting all this hype, and he put up his last year's stat box as proof of why he's not any good or something. It's like, yeah. Well, Come on, he, and like you just said, Bico, he just got paid so much money. How many 
backup tight ends have you seen get paid that much money? It's because all this They had a plan. Logic it was the first and, order right. of business for this new regime was go out and get a person to fit into their system and perform their scheme. And that's what we said. And so last year, I, I, I get to listen to a lot of podcasts because I run my own business and I sit on a tractor most of the time. And I got my headphones on. And if I'm not studying real estate investment, it's, it's, it's fantasy football. Had to get a real estate investment. Mix, and, mix and mix. <laughs> I, you know, you can only listen to so much. I know. I but I'm, I'm literally digging for just people to give me facts all day long that I don't have time to go dig for. Because I, I don't work in front of a computer. I don't have time to go and look at all these stats. Y'all boys give them to me. And Graham Barfield gave them to you after two weeks of preseason. He gave you like it was like a 0.2% less of Burton's usage in the slot and targets and all that stuff moving around than Kelsey has on average when he plays for the Chiefs. Right. So it's right there lined up. And last year going into week, it was after week one, I was listening to Matt Kelly's podcast. And after week one, Tariq Cohen blows up and David Johnson gets hurt and Matt Kelly's numbers machine says Curran Williams was the pick, and he said if you didn't pick up Curran Williams off the uh, waiver wire over Tariq, over Tariq, then you were doing it wrong, and you were bad at fantasy football. And then he goes and does his thing, and he says, you know, fantasy football doesn't have to be hard, ha 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 ha. Yeah. And then guess who's the better asset for your dynasty team? Curran uh, Curran Williams. Two weeks later, in Cur- what world did anybody think Curran Williams was going to be a good asset for your fantasy? Matt Zero Kelly's world. world. Matt right. Kelly's world yeah. was that. And so after that, I didn't if you're really. A minion have- or a buzzard, I guess. I didn't have time for that mess. So I got off the Matt. Ke- I, 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 he's going to give me some stats. He's got a great website. I love the advanced metrics. I'm not saying I don't appreciate the advanced metrics. I love. I want to incorporate them as much as possible. But I'm not going to pretend like I don't watch football and I don't use logic. Oh, that's the problem. He doesn't watch football. That's, that's clear. I know. I know. But you, you know. So I'm not going to pretend like I'm not. Hey, I'll take a little bit from over here, but my core package is I want to watch these games and see how these players look. And I pay attention to coaching and offensive lines and all that fun stuff. So Matt Kelly tells me that Trey, that you got to go after Curran Williams and you're doing it wrong if you don't give Tariq Cohen a chance. I'm like, okay. If you do uh, give him a chance. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you're doing it wrong if you pick up Tariq Cohen over right. Curran Williams. And I was like, man, just the staunchness and the inability for him to be incorrect on that statement was enough for me to be like, you know what? I can get my stats from somewhere else. So the other day, I got pretty bored. I'm listening to some podcasts, looking for some stuff. And I was like, you know what? Let me give Matt Kelly another chance. I get 14 minutes and 40 seconds in. <laughs> Time until stamped. I'm th- <laughs> throwing up in my mouth. My man... <laughs> He goes and tells you, he spent in the first 10 minutes, he's talking about Gronk on this podcast and talking about how Gronk's good and he's a league winner. And sure, we all love Gronk. Why not? I already so, gave you those stats a couple weeks ago. Gave you those stats. The podcast. The, yeah. <laughs> well, we're talking about how we wouldn't necessarily buy him in a dynasty league startup in the second round because the investment and all that stuff. But the points per game is the points outrageous. per game is undeniable. Undeniable. Great advantage at the tight end position. But then he goes and he says, I want to tell you about this tight end who is the second tight end on his team. You might not even know his name. And he said, my minions might know his name, but here is, it's Adam Sheen. Adam Sheen, he could be the next Gronk. And you need, this is why you're not even taking Trey Burton because on the goal line, Adam Sheen's coming in and Trey Burton's coming out. And it's just is that like, right now. How, and he, and th- <laughs> but he, but he took the time to tell us, yeah. the people that are listening to him, and and you know basically his audience, which I feel really sorry for because they, they get in tra- and if they get in that bear trap and they don't get a chance to listen to people like us, they're in a bear trap. So I mean, if you're down with being called a minion or buzzard, then you deserve Matt Kelly. Well, that's true. So let me no t- let me let me finish while I threw up in my mouth. <laughs> okay, so he tells you to stay away from Burton completely because he called him diminutive. He said he's 6'3", 235 pounds, and he's too small to play tight end. Uh, and his best player, player profiler comparison is James Casey. And he said, you don't want James Casey on your team. <laughs> and so for him to have the nerve to tell his uh, – I'm, I'm here to tell our listeners that might have heard that, that come on now, pay attention to what's going on. Watch that first quarter of the second preseason game and see the next usage of Travis Kelsey come to life. And maybe he's not Travis Kelsey, but you can't watch football and watch him catch those balls and not be like, oh, my God, I want this guy on my team. Got to Because if, you're, if, you, if you see all that and then you're like, okay, I'm good on passing on him, I can't help you. Yeah. Listen, I got no problem with Adam Shaheen. I liked Adam Shaheen. He's, the athletic profile is awesome, and it's great. And he's a big guy and all that kind of stuff. It's, again, he's also not this regime's guy. This was the last regime's guy, and their first order of business was coming in and getting a guy that they wanted to 
do their thing with and paying him handsomely. and paying him handsomely. I have no problem with Adam Shaheen and I have no problem putting him on my bench at all. But if you think that you're going to come out here and grab Adam Shaheen and you're going to be able to put him in your starting lineup from week to week. Absolutely not. That's ridiculous. That, exactly. Right. And I talk a lot about starting lineups and I look like I, I don't. You I can like say Adam Shaheen's Shaheen. a great hold. I got Shaheen. Don't on, be discouraged. I got Shaheen on a taxi squad on a team that I really, really like. I Don't be discouraged. Yeah, this ain't about Listen, knocking Adam Shaheen. This is not about knocking Adam Shaheen. This Shaheen, is about Gerton, Burton's role and the targets and the catches and the PPR value. Shaheen and the is now already seen. Shaheen is now Burton and Burton is now Ertz. Finkel right. is Einhorn. Einhorn is Finkel. <laughs> Einhorn is a man. <laughs> like, I, there's sure Shaheen will be useful if if anything happens to Burton. Yeah, you know, ab- absolutely. I have no problem with any of that. It's not like Shaheen's not going to be out on the field. He is a little injured right now. This it was an ankle. Now it's a foot. I don't low know what's ankle. going on. Low ankle but, sprain. But now it's a foot injury. Oh. Well, the way that the way that fall looked on that catch that he had, it looked like it that could be like a potential like Liz Frank type foot yeah. stress. The so way his foot. Who stressed. really knows what's going on there? But I mean, I'm, I'm again, I'm not here to bash Shaheen by any no, means. It's not. But just the fact of you saying that you you want to pass on Burton, who by the way has been freer than free forever and recently yeah, the, the ADP is going up yeah. and it se- seems like it's making sense why it's going up yeah um, right just well, fancy we gave that you, we gave you the cheap Burton forever and we gave him to you literally on our podcast called cheap money we gave him to you over and over and over again and so but for Matt Kelly to come on there and tell his listeners to go after to pass, to, to pass on pass. Burton because they got Shaheen because he's he's a huge man and his agility score his size adjusted agility score is great and it was that of a wide receiver, which it really isn't great for him, but that doesn't make him a good football player. And I'm not and saying not he's, he's not, not a, a good football, football player. That's, I, that's Trey a, Burton was a great football player. He had to sit behind another great football player. That's the thing. Right. I'm not saying I, on the way it works on our podcast, the way it works on Married to the Game, is I'm not going to say that Adam Shaheen is a bad football player to prop up my boy Burton. I'm right. telling you that Shaheen is a good football player, but Burton is about to beast in this in this system. And he is a beast, and I'm not going to let a size of Shaheen is a good football not player. There's really nothing to suggest that that he knows how to actually play. I'm I mean, not going to college let tape is ridiculous. A size adjusted speed score dominant. get in the way of recognizing good fantasy points headed my way, and I'm not going to have my pride in the way of what I think about Burton to try to beat down somebody else. And right. that's basically what he was saying. Matt Kelly said the narrative around why Trey Burton is about to be good is the most ridiculous thing he's heard of all off season. And if you cannot see this, how it works out in a one, two, three scenario, like Casey said, and if you go back and listen to the Trey Burton stuff and cheap money, and you go back and talk, listen to that chiefs episode and the bears episode, comparing and talking about those coachings and the staffs and the it's way called it all the coaching came. narrative search for it the on coaching there right right that's go what you to think search Jay, for it just round one draft pick over here if you go back to the coaching narrative podcast we laid it out for you in a very easy to follow situation and, and it's playing out and perfectly i just right i now. couldn't listen to that throw up in my mouth and not come in here and tell our people you know this is how we roll this is how it goes. If you can't, it's football is played on a field, week, not in a computer. Week one, football week, is played on absolutely. the field, not week on one, a computer. Week two could roll around, and maybe it is Shaheen for all I know. But well, there's not nearly as many logical pieces of evidence. pieces of evidence that right. suggest that this that Shaheen is going to be in the role of a Kelsey or an Ertz, and Burton is just going to be some schlub like right. he was on the last team that he was on like it's, this is just stupid just I'm not trying. saying pass on Shaheen I'm saying get Shaheen too but take Burton first right. if you pass on Burton you're going to pay for it you might yeah. make you might end up finding other tight ends that are good you I'm not saying if you don't have Burton you can't get tight oh, end points absolutely but not. if you get Burton it's a lot just easier isolated to Burton like the the tight end and the Bears to own is certainly not Shaheen right now I don't mm-hmm. mind owning Shaheen he's cheap if you own Burton it's great if not put him on the bottom of your bench Cool, right? But cool. <laughs> and if you haven't, if you haven't gotten Trey Burton up to this point where he's been so cheap and his value's just been growing, like I'm still down to pay the market price for Trey Burton as it is right now because it's only going to keep going up. Absolutely. Next year, he's not going to be an eighth round pick. Yeah, that's I right. Mean, that's or ninth right. round or wherever no, you can get him right absolutely now. Absolutely, not, not. going to happen. He's not. It'll be. He'll be more expensive. Obviously, at this point, the only thing stopping Burton's value is injury. And that's it. That only not thing even is, Mitch Punchable Face Trubisky can I, not throw him the ball. Uh, who's been a, t- a, a, a safe quarterback's 
asset blanket. and target and blanket. It's it's the tight end. Yep. Yeah. Nine times out of ten. And we haven't seen Allen Robinson on the field and we've hardly seen Trubisky and Burton on the field. But what you just saw there and, and how they used him and what they were doing with him, it all just made too much sense. And it seems like it's all kind of coming together now. And yeah, you can you can listen to him and you can pick up Shaheen, but you ain't getting any points from Shaheen. And I mean, you could get points for Shaheen, I'm saying, for sure, especially you're, you're in not going to want to put him in your exactly in you your starting line in a best ball format where he's just one of your team that can be put in yeah. based on his weekly production. But if you got to hit submit in the lineup, you you do not want Shaheen over Burton, not even close. Right. I mean, I'm trying to I'm trying to win games. This is the kind of stuff that we're going that we've been giving you in the past, and we're going to st- continue to give you forever and ever but the the juiciest stuff is going to be going to our patron people our family members go over and check us out on patreon patreon to continue getting stuff just like burton for the entire off season dating back all the way last year to the end of the season all right well we got one more piece of one more piece to get to here before we uh jump out of this regular show and move on to the patreon show i want to give a little love to anthony miller he's getting a lot of respect out there right now he was one of our favorite players one of our favorite rookie wide receivers going back to the Rookie mock it up, fuck it up, and 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 breaking down all these rookies um, early on in February, March, April time frame. Really enamored with with uh, Anthony Miller. I didn't necessarily love the landing spot. I would have been much more bullish, even more on him if had he not gone to the Bears, just because I'm just not sold on Mitch. But he's he's coming out here and showing you what he can do, and he made an awesome catch. He's got, I guess, he's got all these Twitter videos going around about oh, the practice. Hi- and- the practice highlight reel for Anthony Miller is real. Yeah, I mean, he's just he should be a guy that you're excited with to get on this young team that's spent some money, that has a good offensive line, a good defense. There's an alpha number one over there. You got a good tight end. This guy should be able to eat. With, he's a he's a man eater. Like you put him one on one, and and he's nasty, and he's just showing you why. And he can make all the the big catches and the wow catches, and he can also do a bunch of the little things that you need him to do. This is the reasons why we like Anthony Miller, and you have to, this is an exciting piece for the Bears and Mitch and all these younger guys to kind of grow with and watch this offense progress down the line. So you got to be excited if you got a piece of Anthony Miller or your fantasy drafts are coming around and you got that high end second round pick to to invest in a guy like Anthony Miller or or 112 or something along those lines. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, he's 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 as good he could be as good as any of these rookie wide receivers. Yeah. Well, that's going to wrap up our show for today. Uh, we're going to take the rest of this show, like Big Co just mentioned, over to Patreon. We got some more Broncos uh, chit chat. We got some talk about Bill Musgraves in this offense and and where we think you know this run game could be heading, and and uh, maybe a little Keenum talk, uh, some some of this tight end talk over there. Somebody's got to come out on top, and then we'll dive into a little Falcons Chiefs on the Patreon show, and then we have a slew of. Uh, Questions. People who are already on Patreon who we're going to address their questions directly, which is a huge perk of being on Patreon. You can get your answers uh, or your questions uh, kind of answered directly. You're getting an hour at least of extra content every single week for basically like a dollar twenty five a week uh, for the five dollars a month that you're paying on Patreon. And That's we're, in the couch cushions. Right. Right. My buddy at work was like, five dollars a month. I was like, Man, you go you get coffee every day. You spend that on coffee every day. Yeah. Just sign up. He yeah. signed up. <laughs> he wanted it. He yeah. got in. So that was cool. Uh but yeah, go over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty. You can find it from our webpage, the FF Dynasty.com. Be sure to hit up the forums, the FF Dynasty.com slash community. That's a way you can get your questions uh, asked and, and and answered if if you're not on Patreon. Um our Patreon members are all active on the forums as well, so that's a cool little community we're building up. Get our get our core together. Make sure we get everybody situated for this awesome season that's coming up. We're on all your platforms of choice: Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, iTunes. Oh, Jinx! Nope. Uh, <laughs> definitely on iTunes. Please go down and hit that five star review. Really helps us out. Please and thank you. And then, like Casey just said over me, YouTube on there go hit subscribe really trying to get to those thousand subscribers so we can start monetizing that shit <laughs> so help us out even if you're not on youtube just go just go hit subscribe for five dollar holla just subscribe and then give us that five dollar holler if you want the extra hour hour half of uh, content every week you got to get that patreon subscription yeah so we'll see you over there till next time you've been listening to the ff dynasties married to the game